to say the obvious, the last couple of years have been quite dramatic uh, when it comes to events uh, related to North Korea and related to our respective governments' uh, efforts to engage and negotiate with the uh, leadership in North Korea. I'm not going to go over all that, but I guess what we're really asking ourselves is where are we now? Um, I'd say that, just very briefly, uh, we're certainly in a period of where tensions are lower than they were in 2017, when I think they were at an all-time high, or at least a decades-long high. That's a good thing. Uh, there have been no nuclear tests for a year or so, uh, no long-range missile tests. That's certainly something that uh, President Trump has welcomed. Uh, I noticed he said just the other day he considered his engagement in North Korea to be one of the signal accomplishments of his presidency. Whatever it is, and here's just a couple of thoughts, I think that new method, or the method going forward, uh, needs to build trust, build confidence. I do think it's inevitab inevitably a step-by-step -step kind of method that will take some time. But I think the goals have really not changed too much, as I said, over the years, and have been reaffirmed uh, both in Seoul and in... Uh, uh, in Washington, to some extent in Pyongyang, in terms of the goals of denuclearization, tension reduction, and the peace process. And the other principle I would just mention is, or two more principles, I guess, in addition to steps, steps that would build all those things. There's lots and lots of permutations of what a process might look like. But one, you have to have a process. And I don't think we've really built a sustainable process below the uh, summitry, which has created the opportunity, but is yet to be filled in with a real process. And it's a process that must include close coordination between Seoul and Washington. Again, that may seem obvious, but I think it needs continual reinforcement. It's harder to do, as we all know, in practice than just by saying it. But it's absolutely essential. And it must have a regional dimension, too. I was genuinely worried that there might be something happening, not necessarily because either Kim Jong-un or Donald Trump would get up in the morning and decide to press the button, but usually it happens because of an accident, because of a you know, miscalculation. And I remember one day, you know, there was, I, I think you all remember that uh, uh, in, in Hawaii, they had detected missiles coming from North Korea. And I was very worried. And, and you know, usually in those days, if I was worried, I would call Andy. And Andy said, hey, Andy, what's going on? He said, no, that's a false alarm, you know. <laughs> but it got me thinking, you know, we found out it was false alarm because there was a secondary system that would detect it and say uh, that was a false alarm. But if it happened uh, in North Korea, where they don't really have a secondary system, then I think we would be in a mess. So, you know, from there on, I think you have to give a huge amount of credit to President Moon, who really brought the two sides together, and, uh, you know, and, and, and we had the first summit in, uh, in, 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 in Singapore. And at that time, I had left the government, and I was actually commentating for CNN, watching it from, from Singapore as things were unraveling. And it was completely beyond expectation. And I have a, another interesting quote, you know, there, you know. Um, and, 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 and this was, uh, you know, immediately afterwards, Trump comes out and, and says about uh, Kim Jong-un, he's a great personality very smart, worthy negotiator. We have fantastic chemistry. And, uh, and, and then, you know, a few months still after, and more amazing still, he said that they exchanged letters. They were great letters. We fell in love. I mean, you know, it's, it's not something we hear that often uh, about the leaders and so on. And so when... Uh, Anthony and everyone said, this is going to be title of our talk. It got me thinking, do they have a relationship? Because frenemy implies there is some kind of relationship. And my answer, you know, has to be no. I think rather what it is, is that they're gaming each other. They're gaming each other to see who can get advantage one over the other. Uh, and so I, I really doubt 
they are working out saying whether they can win round one, whether they can win round two. My own conclusion is that round one, Kim Jong-un has won. I mean, compare his image now to the image two years ago, and it is completely different in US. You know, he's no longer th uh, seen as some oddity, but seen as a leader that meets regularly with other world leaders. So he has won legitimacy. He has won respect. He has won a place on diplomatic table at the highest levels. And in terms of substance, you also have to say, well, I think he's done pretty well. You know, uh, what has he given up so far? He has agreed to not test missiles, long range missiles. He's agreed not to test nuclear devices. In return, he has gotten America and South Korea not to do any joint exercise. Remember, joint exercises were a huge threat. I do think uh, on, on Trump's part, he is very desperate to show something before the elections next year. And Kim Jong-un also must go where, you know, beyond there to get some sanctions relief, to get some security assurance. So this is why I think it has to be played out much longer. And in this sense, the thing I came away with speaking with North Koreans a few times is that they know U.S. very, very well. But as Andy says, U.S. is still really learning about North Korea. And in that sense, they do have an advantage despite the size, despite the kind of asymmetric uh, positions you know, of each other. Number one, as Mr. Kim kind of alluded, how much do we now really know about North Korea? I mean, are there things that we didn't know before we are getting to know? And related to that, the bottom line of diplomacy is people's act. So people are policies in a way. We are getting, get, we are getting to know them. Uh, we have a teams installed, a new team, old team and all that. And how do you see, say, the sort of different levels of chemistry, especially Trump and Moon, President Moon and President Trump. Many expected you know, there would be very different and difficult relationship. The fact that they met nine times, I think that's, that's really great. And perhaps you can touch upon U.S.-Korea alliance angle too. And Ambassador Yoon already said it, there seems to be no working meaningful relationship between Trump and Kim Jong-un. How do you see all these two factors? How much have we been learning about North Korea, either tactics and whatever? Uh, how do you see the people's kind of interaction out of this ongoing, let's say, journey? At the beginning of the Obama years, the six-party talks were still going on, on life support. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically kind of petered out, if you like, uh, at the beginning of the Obama administration, despite the Obama administration saying, we want to continue them. We know, looking back, that this was a period when Kim Jong-il had had a stroke mm -hmm. and, and they were in succession. So just a point to make that, that North Korea has agency, too. You know, I don't think it was entirely a matter of the United States or, for that matter, the Republic of Korea deciding we don't want to engage with North Korea. It was very difficult. And, right, we had Kim Jong-un as a new leader consolidating power, mm -hmm. consolidating and accelerating his nuclear program. And I think really focusing on that, not on any form of engagement. So that's point number one. But, yes, the more we can engage and know, the, you know, the, the, the better off we'll be. But, secondly, I, as... as important and even as unconventional as it was to front load the process when it did begin with with Kim Jong-un and Trump meeting and testing this this hypothesis has long been out mm -hmm. there that mm -hmm. North Korea is so highly centralized you're never getting get going to get anywhere until you really go to the top okay we've done that and I welcome that I among other things I think it's broken that taboo for an American leader, I don't think it quite existed the same way in South Korea, for an American leader to have that kind of meeting with North Korea. But I don't think that's enough. <laughs> and, and you know, my impression is, I mean, even when leaders engage, even when they write each other letters, uh, it's a fairly, you know, it's, there's not enough time or bandwidth there 
to to do all the things you need to do in a, a on, in a complicated set of issues like we're talking about. So I do think that it needs to be underpinned and supported by a very robust uh, negotiation. Mm -hmm. Just uh, two 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 comments. One on uh, no North Korea and and what have we learned. Uh, so, you know, I started, uh, my first assignment doing career work was mid-90s. And, uh, and, and, and every negotiation between U.S. and North Korea is about how much denuclearization for how much mm -hmm. normalization. That's the issue, you know? How much denuclearization for how much normalization. The problem is within those, what, 30 years or so, the price has gone up. Mm -hmm. The price has gone mm -hmm. up. North Korea now, the last test was what? Uh, 2017 September, 200 kilotons. That's about 20 times the size of the bomb that went off in Hiroshima. They now have an ICBM. Uh, and, and that can reach anywhere in the United States. So the problem we're facing is materially different than mm -hmm. it was in the beginning. So the just, I think, thinking about normalization, I don't think it's going to do it. The price has gone up. Mm -hmm. So and we don't know yet what price it is or whether there is a price at all. But there has to be a recognition that North Korea is approaching all this stronger and more confident they have ever been. And that, in that time, of course, the US has changed too. U.S. has become more nationalistic, more inward-looking, more worried about immigration, more worried about trade. So in that sense, electing Trump is not an aberration. It's a symptom of what is happening. And when Trump questions, you know, things like, well, well should we pull out troops from South Korea? Uh, should we demand five times the money to have stationed troops here? It is a problem. It is a problem that the leader of the United States does not have the commitment to the alliance. So I want to point out those two problem, uh, problems we're facing. One is what looks like less commitment from the US, and the other one, the price has gone up. So that begs South Korea must do some fundamental rethinking mm -hmm. in terms of how to position itself. Mm -hmm. If something unthinkable can happen, how rapid transformation could we see in terms of North Korea's change? Is it even possible to talk about? Just quick comments on that. And related to that, do you think North Korea issue is an election issue? Because we are getting into another election. election. I don't see a rapid transformation that is also manageable and stable. And I think one thing that President Moon and I think President Trump share is a notion that you want a, a peaceful transformation. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to take time. And I think that, that Joe laid out in a way, and, and so did Andy, and it does kind of get to what is the price, if you like. Maybe I shouldn't say his price, but what is the deal? And I know in Korea people talk about big deal, small deal, good deal, bad deal. And, you know, but but you, know, you, you have economic sanctions. You have the inter-Korean element. You have the peace process. You have elements attached to the alliance, which are sometimes related to hostile policy. There's a huge menu of things. And some of it gets to, you know, I think North Korea also wants a deal. Yeah. They want something, I think, in this term of Trump and in this term of Moon Jae-in. But I don't think it's going to be everything. Um, and I hope there can be something, too. And I, I, so I am, as you can say, an advocate of a small but good deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The World Knowledge Forum.